gaining weight. After the initial shock wore off and family members showered them with diapers and clothes, Donnie and Melissa say they're getting the hang of this parenting thing, even if it wasn't in their plans. But it's amazing now. 11 Alive News at noon starts now. With Atlanta out of the picture, a new location is in the works for the Major League Baseball All-Star Game. How locals are feeling about the change of venue. Plus, growing concerns about a double mutant COVID variant. What it could mean for those who are already vaccinated. Plus, finding stability in the workforce. What the new normal will look like for career women post-pandemic. Major League Baseball expected to formally announce today its All-Star Game will be played at Coors Field in Denver. The game was supposed to be held at Truist Park in Cobb County, but last Friday the league announced it was moving it in response to Georgia's new controversial election law. It's a big blow to Cobb County, which has been looking forward to showcasing its new stadium on a national level. And on top of that, the game typically pulls in millions of dollars for the host city when you factor in all the fans and events surrounding the game. Tracy A. McPeer joins us live by the battery to explain what happens now to the $2 million Cobb had planned to spend on security and transportation related to the game. Well, now that the game has been moved, those projects have been put on hold. Now, they included everything from canine training to a new real-time crime center. Now, none of the money allocated for those projects has been spent yet. And Cobb County Communications Director Ross Cavett says now that the game's been moved, they'll likely lose the approval to even spend that money. But coming up at a meeting next month, they could try to get approval again for some of those items. Public safety has been wanting for a while to start a uh, what they call a real time crime center. Uh, it's a bunch of high tech devices to help them keep a better track of what crimes are happening in the county at any given time. Uh, they've been wanting to do that for a while. So that was uh, put in the all star agenda for um, use during the game and then thereafter. So when commissioners take a, another look at this uh, agenda item, uh, that and some other thing, including some equipment and training the public safety needed. Uh, they may take a second look at that, whether to continue on with those projects. Now, Republicans who supported the bill accuse Major League Baseball of caving to pressure to move the game, with Governor Brian Kemp insisting he will not back down from this fight over the law. The state is currently facing four federal lawsuits over the 90-plus page measure, which include a number of provisions like requiring an ID number to apply for an absentee ballot, allowing the state to take control of underperforming local election systems, and banning people from giving food and water to voters waiting in line. Opponents argue the provisions disproportionately affect minority voters. Now, coming up tonight at 5, we'll have reaction to the All-Star Game being moved to Denver. We'll also take a closer look at Georgia's new law and how it compares to Colorado's voting system. It is officially Masters Week at Augusta National. Let's give you a look at the grounds and the first patrons who made their way in yesterday. There were no patrons in November's tournament due to COVID, but now they are back in limited numbers at least. The tournament officially starts Thursday and runs through Sunday. But I don't think we're, we're stepping out of our way to block it out and forget about it. You know, this voter stuff and, and voters for American citizens is, is very important. I think that's the topic that we should all be talking about. We shouldn't be talking about whether we're here or not. Um, the Masters, the PGA Tour, we do such a good job and we're trying to help communities out. And I think that's our main focus for the week. That was Colin Morikawa talking about the controversial new election law here in Georgia that now people have been calling on a boycott to boycott the Masters. The Masters Augusta National has remained silent on the issue, but Augusta National Chairman Fred Ridley is scheduled to speak to reporters tomorrow and will likely field more questions about the club's response to the law. New pushback today against part of the voting law, and it comes from one of the state's largest counties. The new law makes it a misdemeanor for non-poll workers to give food or water within 150 feet of the outer polling edge of the polling place and within 25 feet of any voter in line. The Gwinnett County Solicitor's Office says it will not prosecute anyone for handing out nonpartisan food or water because it says there is no rational legal basis for this law. New developments out of Bibb County. One deputy has been killed. Another is hurt after a stabbing at a jail this morning. The Bibb County Sheriff says an inmate was being moved for disciplinary issues when he began to fight with deputies. He says the inmate grabbed a knife from one of the deputies, 
30-year-old Christopher Knight was killed. 32-year-old Jerome Williams was hurt, but the sheriff says he should be okay. The GBI now investigating the incident, and the sheriff's office says his office will conduct an internal investigation into weapons in the jail. New video this hour. Coweta County sent us this police body cam video and dash cam video that shows a brief chase from Friday night. It ended in Fulton County when the car being chased crashed, killing both people inside. According to a police report, Coweta County deputies first tried to make a traffic stop, and they say the vehicle sped up, and after a short chase, deputies lost sight of it. On the video, the chase lasts less than two minutes, but you can see deputies in the pursuit. Then the car they're following goes out of frame. Just seconds later, they come upon the crash. Authorities say each person in the car was wanted on multiple charges out of different counties. Well, we are looking at sunshine for this afternoon. Take a look outside our weather window. It shows Circle 75. This is over by Truist Park where we can see plenty of sun. We will get a few high thin clouds later on this afternoon, but other than that, even those high thin clouds won't take away from our sunshine for this afternoon. It looks beautiful out there and temperatures are starting to warm right on up into those 70s. Yeah, we'll respond to that sun. Notice the clouds up here to the north moving into our far northwestern counties right now. That's where we have a few high thin clouds. There's nothing coming out of those clouds at all and it won't. Uh, most of those are made of ice crystals. They're so high up into the atmosphere and you can see right through them. They're translucent. And so we'll have that sunshine around for the rest of the afternoon, even though some of you will see a few clouds. Look at this temperatures well into the 70s just about everywhere you look close to 80 right now in Athens. Think they'll get up there? Yes. They will get up to 80 today. For us, we'll get very close. I'm thinking 80, uh, 78 degrees will be the high temperature. 74 right now in the city of Atlanta. 72 down LaGrange. 73 degrees over toward Edenton. You got 71 up there in Blairsville. Clayton at 68 so far this afternoon. 78 for your high temperature will drop back down to 74 degrees by 7. A good evening for that nice long walk or even dinner out on the patio. Changes are coming our way. We'll talk more about it in the full forecast straight ahead. Christy, back to you. Now to growing concerns over a new double mutant COVID-19 variant. It's blamed for a spike in cases in India, and now 15 cases are documented here in the U.S. It's called a double mutant variant because it carries two mutations on the part of the virus that attach to the cells, making it easier for the virus to become more transmissible. The news comes as the CDC warns of a fourth surge in infections. We talked with a public health expert who said it's too soon to tell if current vaccines will be effective against this new variant. I think what raises concern is mutations occurring uh, near or on the spike protein, which is the main area where the vaccines are active. So if you have changes to that area of the virus, there's a greater concern that it may impact on the ability of current vaccines to protect the public. So far, Pfizer has said they are working to develop a vaccine booster to protect against variants. New this hour, the CDC has awarded more than $95 million to Georgia. The money will help support local efforts and vaccine expansion across the state, ensuring greater access to the vaccine in underserved communities. The award is part of a $3 billion funding that the CDC has granted to 64 jurisdictions to help vaccine efforts across the country. According to a White House official today, President Biden will announce that every state must make all adults eligible for the vaccine by April 19th. That's two weeks earlier than his original deadline of May 1st. The U.S. has administered more than 150 million doses of the vaccine so far. President Biden's new goal is 200 million shots by his 100th day in office. A new study suggests that when a pregnant woman gets the COVID-19 vaccine may determine how well the antibodies are transferred to her baby. Researchers studied 27 women in their third trimester who were fully vaccinated. Once the babies were born, all but three tested positive for antibodies at birth. Future studies will include women who were vaccinated in their first or second trimester. Many people lost their job during the pandemic, but women got hit the hardest. 12.2 million women lost their jobs and 4.6 million have not returned. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, this is the highest job loss for women since the 1980s. Experts say the pandemic disproportionately impacted women's careers because of the jobs they hold, including the service industry and hospitality. The pandemic also impacted childcare. So how women can be set up for success coming out of the pandemic, NBC's Stephanie Rule explains. 
So when you think about who was able to work from home, it ended up being predominantly men who have those white collar jobs. The opportunity is now, as we reskill the American worker, let's get women in some of those higher paying, more stable industries. Right now, we have to look at coming out of COVID as an opportunity for women. According to Rule, more than 300,000 women have made their way back into the workforce as COVID restrictions loosen. The second week of the Derek Chauvin trial continues in Minneapolis today with more expert testimony expected on use of fourth and cause of death. Chauvin is charged with second degree murder and manslaughter and third degree murder in the death of George Floyd last May. Jay Gray reports from Minneapolis. Hey there, look, today look for the prosecution to continue dealing with the technical aspects in this case, the policing issues as well as uh, any medical details in George Floyd's death. Now yesterday we saw the Minneapolis chief of police as the primary witness for the prosecution. He outlined all the policies, all the rules as far as the department is concerned and then talked to the jury about how he believed Derek Chauvin had violated those, abused his power. And and it seemed in cross-examination by the defense, they couldn't really create any space from that issue. It is contrary to our training to indefinitely place um, your knee on a prone, handcuffed individual for an indefinite period of time. Yesterday ended strong for the prosecution as well with a former head trainer for the Minneapolis Police Department on the stand showing a picture of Chauvin on top of George Floyd, his knee across his neck. Her response, and I'm quoting here, what is that? That's not something we train. That's the latest here in Minneapolis. I'm Jay Gray. Back to you now. Coming up next, the recovery in Newton continues. We're getting more information about just how much damage that EF4 tornado caused and what recovery efforts may look like for the next several weeks. White only, no black! 1912, all but one issue has been erased. We haven't had none up here since the first of the century. What's the importance of making sure this history isn't erased? So that it doesn't happen again. Is your morning routine feeling a little routine? Then mix it up. Morning Rush is different. It's the fast-paced news you need with all the energy of your morning coffee. <laughs> Come see the difference on Morning Rush weekdays on 11 Alive. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. Here in Atlanta, bad weather means bad traffic. A few drops of rain could destroy a commute. But that's where my man Crash Clark comes in. I go street level, he goes next level. Together, we make sure you get to work on time. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Hey, quick, open up your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Live's new and improved app. This QR code will take you right to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Atlanta roads are my thing. ITP, OTP, Ponce, Piedmont, all the peach trees. Combined with Chesley's street level forecast, that's a lot of tech and experience to help your commute. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. We're quite the combo. <laughs> Weather changes can make or break your day. That's why the 11 Alive Storm Trackers are always watching what's coming next. Delivering accessible and accurate forecasts that prepare you, not scare you. The Storm Trackers, only on 11 Alive. COVID-19 is still spreading in Georgia. Now get facts, not fear, at 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Track cases by county using our interactive...
weekend this year took on a different meaning for those impacted by a plane crash more than 40 years ago. Jeff Hellinger what has more on a work of art installed to commemorate Georgia's worst aviation disaster. Easter Sunday, a Paulding County memorial service and marker dedication commemorating a horrific event more than four decades ago. An 11-year community effort resulted in a $180,000 permanent work of art to commemorate Georgia's worst aviation disaster. The monument was built a quarter of a mile from the crash site. It was April 4th, 1977, Southern Airlines Flight 242, 81 passengers and four crew members flying to Atlanta from Huntsville, a 30-minute flight, but heavy weather loomed with a severe thunderstorm south of Rome. The DC-9 had engine problems and crashed in New Hope. The memorial was scheduled for last year, but delayed because of the pandemic. Easter week and the memorial dedication resurrected memories from long ago. 61 passengers died, two crew perished, nine dead on the ground, 22 survived, including two flight attendants. Coweta County leaders say the powerful tornado that ripped through Noonan nearly two weeks ago damaged more than 1,700 homes. County officials say 120 homes have severe damage, 70 were destroyed. Local emergency leaders have asked FEMA to survey the damage beginning this week to see if it qualifies for a federal disaster declaration. If anyone in the area still needs help, reach out to the Red Cross or go to the Coweta County Fairgrounds. They are handing out food and supplies. Well, we're looking at uh, a beautiful afternoon. So what are your plans for today? Perhaps get out the bike, ride a little bit? Yeah, that'd be nice, right? The only thing that may interrupt you or may get you is that pollen. The pollen is up there as well. It's going to be high today. 78 degrees will be our afternoon high temperature. Mostly sunny skies, a little breeze out of the southwest, about six miles per hour. You notice the gra grass is high as well. This is our pollen count for today, 1,807. Getting on up there a little bit. It was a little bit higher yesterday, so they come down just a touch. What we might need is enough rain to come through and help to wash out the atmosphere for us. And we'll get on some of that as we head into Thursday. For now, we have a nice dry day and we'll have one again tomorrow. 10 out of a possible 11 on the wisometer. 78 degrees. Again, our high temperature for today under mostly sunny skies is going to be very, very nice. Not an 11 because typically our temperature this time of year would be around 70. So getting on up there a little bit closer to 10, 10 degrees over uh, our average. Notice the the clouds building to the south or to the west rather that southerly flow coming in, allowing a little extra moisture coming in off the Gulf there. We have a few high thin clouds that are moving into our state, but not going to take away from our sunshine today. We'll watch a front. It's not even on the map yet. Move a little bit closer, which will increase our chance for the rain as we get uh, further into the end of the work week. Dual high pressure helping to keep us nice and dry. We've had it around pretty much all week long. And so that ridge of high pressure continues with those temperatures soaring into the 80s and a lot of spots up here to the north. And so not only us, but our neighbors up north as well. Notice the marginal risk. This dark green here is a marginal risk for severe weather is well off to the west of us today. That front gets a little bit closer and then notice it increases once it gets toward the Midwest here. So you're looking at places like Memphis down through Jackson, uh, northern parts of Louisiana, eastern portions of Texas under that slight risk for severe weather. That's the yellow here. That's a level two out of a possible five that begins to shift to the east. But as it does, it will weaken a bit. And so you notice the yellow goes away for Thursday. But uh, into our state, we have the dark green, which is a level one one out of a possible five, which is a marginal risk for severe weather. So we'll watch that to see if we happen to see any of those thunderstorms reach severe thunderstorm criteria, which means winds could be as high as maybe 60 miles per hour. Here it is, our forecast track model. You can follow along with me with the time right there at the top of the screen. Those high, thin, cirrus clouds I was showing you. Yeah, those are starting to pop up there. Tomorrow morning when you wake up, we'll start off with mostly sunny skies, but once we get toward the afternoon, we're expecting more of those clouds to begin to move in. So we'll wind up with partly sunny skies. Here comes that front. Notice how strong it is back off to the west of us, but then as it moves closer to us, it begins to break up a little bit. So we'll see scattered showers on Thursday morning. Some embedded thunderstorms are possible. We'll see how strong those will be. By noon, we'll notice the rain starting to shift a little further to the east. Late afternoon, we begin to clear it out somewhat, but with the front stalling in our area, we'll see little waves right along that, which will keep the rain in the forecast for your Friday, even into your Saturday as well. 74 degrees will be the high temperature on Saturday. Sunday will be a little bit drier with a 20% chance of rain at 75. Christy. Everyone wants to make money, right? And now a viral TikTok with more than 5 million views says that if you find a $20 bill with mismatched serial number, you can sell it for more than 500 bucks. Evan Kozloff with our verified team is checking this one out. 
The Verify team is here to fact check the things you see on social media that seem just a little too good to be true. Like this TikTok video showing you how you can make some serious money with just a $20 bill. The video says that if you find a $20 bill with mismatched serial numbers, it's worth over $500. And the video has more than 5 million views. So let's verify. Are these kinds of misprints actually worth more than $500? That is true. That's Dustin Johnston. He works for Heritage Auctions, one of the world's largest auctioneers of US currency and paper money. We also talked to Dr. Jesse Kraft. He's a curator specializing in the study of coin collecting and paper currency. And Kraft says that there are all sorts of paper currency printing errors that can happen. Like this one, when a Del Monte banana sticker ended up on a $20 bill and sold for, listen to this, $396,000. That one is extreme just because it's so in your face, you know, and it's, um, you know, has bright colors and it's just a sticker that most people, you know, can at least recognize. With mismatched serial numbers, it's a very minute detail that not a lot of people pick up on. But the more dramatic an error, typically the more value it has. So we can verify that yes, if that bill in your pocket has a misprint, you can make a big profit. Here in Atlanta, bad weather means bad traffic. A few drops of rain could destroy a commute. But that's where my man Crash Clark comes in. I go street level, he goes next level. Together, we make sure you get to work on time. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Hey, quick, open up your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you right to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Atlanta roads are my thing. ITP, OTP, Ponds, Piedmont, all the peach trees. Combined with Chesley's street level forecast, that's a lot of tech and experience to help your commute. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. We're quite the combo. <laughs> Weather changes can make or break your day. That's why the 11 Alive Storm Trackers are always watching what's coming next. Delivering accessible and accurate forecasts that prepare you, not scare you. The Storm Trackers, only on 11 Alive. Atlanta native Keaton Thompson has spent nearly three decades making a name for himself. The comedian got his start in the early 90s on Nickelodeon, then migrated to movies like Good Burger and Fat Albert, but perhaps his biggest break came in 2003 when he joined the cast of SNL, making him the longest tenured cast member in the show's history. Francesca Amaker and Chesley McNeil both got the chance to catch up with him about his newest venture, starring in his very own sitcom that may have a, you know, small resemblance to a very well-known show here on 11 Alive. How in the world do you keep this up? What is your secret sauce to the success of just constantly staying relevant? I mean, Saturday night helps with that a lot. Wanting to be professional and wanting to do my job and be an actor and perform, you know, and perform for the people. Like, that inner drive for me to entertain is just... It's just in me like that. And that inner drive has catapulted the Tri-Cities High School graduate to heights all over the nation, from a small role in the Mighty Ducks to one of the breakout stars of Nickelodeon's All That and now making history as the longest running cast member on SNL. She went to Tri-Cities High School along with what, Candy Burris, Andre 3000, Big Boy, a bunch of big names coming out of there, you being one of them. So what's been kind of like the, the biggest, wow, like you made it, dude, what's been that like? like? A lot of people know my on-screen persona, but these people in my high school life know me, the person, and they're like, man, you were so quiet, you know, walking through the halls or whatever, and then you get on TV and you just explode. And now he's incorporating his hometown into his latest project on NBC called Keenan, a comedic TV series about a single father of two daughters working hard to balance his career as the host of the popular morning show, Wake Up with Keenan. Sound familiar? Cue Chesley McNeil, host of Wake Up with Chesley with a little interrogation. When we first saw the show, we was like, wait a minute, he's in Atlanta? Yeah, He's a oh, black man. He oh, has a show called Wake Up With Kenan. Oh, oh, What's oh, going oh. on? We said Kenan done ripped us off. 
Leslie, don't worry. There's a check in the mail coming for you. He says a ton of creativity went into his new show, which also happens to star Atlanta sisters Danny and Dana Lane. He also says the show will help families foster that family time, time he valued as a little boy. Because that's how I grew up, you know, like we had our favorite shows and it was probably only one working TV in the house at a time, you know, so everybody had to kind of be on the same page. And, you know, for me, that kept us close. Mm. <laughs> Chesley, that definitely uh, <laughs> looks like a show I'm thinking of right now. Uh, have you gotten that check yet? No, no. <laughs> he even said maybe he'd cash at me just to make it faster, and that has not been <laughs> done yet. But uh, great show. If you haven't checked it out, of course, it comes on tonight, 8.30, right here on 11 Alive. It is really funny. I watched it for the first time last week. It's, it's really fun. Yeah, I like his tagline. I don't care who you wake up with as long as you're... I don't care who you went to bed with, as long as you wake up with Keenan. I thought about stealing that line since he stole my show. Fair. That seems fair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's 25. Stick with us. we got a few more minutes when we come back. Your commute. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. We're quite the combo. <laughs> Weather changes can make or break your day. That's why the 11 Alive Storm Trackers are always watching what's coming next. Delivering accessible and accurate forecasts that prepare you, not scare you. The Storm Trackers, only on 11 Alive. COVID-19 is still spreading in Georgia. Now get facts, not fear, at 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Track cases by county using our interactive map and get the latest health department data. Visit 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Health experts fear we're just at the start of another surge. Residents here are some of the first seniors to get the vaccine. This epidemic can come to an end. We do have a flash flood warning that just popped up here. And the fallout of this is just beginning. The bigger questions are the longer legal ramifications. Morning news should be both informative and fun. Gone are the days where we're speaking at you. On Morning Rush, we're speaking with you. So connect with us. Talk to us. Think of it as a conversation. Morning Rush weekdays, 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Quick, open your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Morning news should be informative and fun. Yeah, and we do that here on Morning Rush with Verify, Connect the Dots, Why Guy, and more. We love learning about new things and sharing them with you. We make the news make sense. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. The Negro people had to leave. They were told to get out. White only, no black! Green Bay Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers steps into the shoes of Alex Trebek as a guest host on Jeopardy. Rodgers, a former celebrity Je Jeopardy champion himself, began hosting the iconic game show last night. The three-time NFL MVP called the opportunity a dream gig, but says he's not quite ready to quit his day job as the Packers starting quarterback just yet, but he is open to hosting. Rodgers will be hosting the new show, or not new show, new host, but he will be hosting the show for the next two weeks according to the Jeopardy! website. And he says he did some studying up before he did host. Uh, he, he sat down and spoke with Sheba Russell, saying he went back and looked through all of the old episodes so he could find some new words to say instead of, yes, good, correct, that's right. <laughs> so he did his homework. Um, you can see that, uh, that interview up on our website, 11alive.com. Thanks so much for watching 11 Alive News at Noon. I'm Christy Diaz. Stay safe. Now, aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you right to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy.
Atlanta roads are my thing. ITP, OTP, Ponds, Piedmont, all the peach trees. Combined with Chesley's street level forecast, that's a lot of tech and experience to help your commute. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. We're quite the combo. <laughs>